have to go under a bridge. We're Which not isn't sure. high enough, so we could definitely hit. Oh god. Can Mama have some? Oh. Uh. Woo! <laughs> I'm Elena, and this is Sorali, and this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last five years and have recently found ourselves with a stowaway. Meet Lenny. Subscribe and welcome aboard. Morning guys. We recently just sailed up the Guadiana River. It's actually the river that borders Portugal to Spain. Spain's in lockdown so we haven't been able to visit there at all. But this morning we're going to sail even further up the river and that means we have to go under a bridge which we've read is 18 metres. We're which not sure. isn't high enough so we could definitely hit. Yeah we're 20.1 so we could end up one of those like qualified captain videos where you get devastated. <laughs> It's going to be close. We need to go up there. All of our friends are up the river and they said it's amazing. There's like castles and tiny little villages. I'm nervous as heck. I did not need a coffee this morning. Good morning, Lenny. <laughs> what a little show off. Lenny, are you excited for the bridge? Let's do it. High five. The height of our mast where we would hit is 20 point one four meters and the height of the bridge the clearance is 18 meters so I was like oh we definitely can't and then Yarn sent me a couple of blog posts and stuff like that there's been some other vessels go through at low tide it's it's gonna be close I am so nervous right now <laughs> I feel sick actually Lenny you're not nervous you're just being a naughty boy aren't you Blocks of birds under this bridge. This is not very good. Obstacle avoidance. That means the bird's getting close. There's a chance we could lose this drone now. Please, birdies, spare us! How are we looking? Oh god. Are we gonna make it? Uh, maybe just, like, I think the antenna might hit, but it's still hard to tell. I mean... Where am I going or not? Oh, babe, I don't know, go back. exactly what the clearance was but my guess is a meter so we made it we survived if you've got a mast that's 20.4 meters I don't know if I'd recommend doing 20. it 20.14 20 20.14 meters you can do it at low low tide but um, full moon it's one. also a full moon right now so it's gonna be interesting going back out Lenny's eating some cereal. Lenny, how's your cereal? Is that good? Can Mama have some? Can Mum have some? Oh, thank you. Oh. 
Nearly. What are we up to? Just come through the bridge. We're going to anchor here for a bit until the tide turns, and then we're going to use the tide to cruise up the river. Got to make a smoothie because we have some time until we can set sail again. And I've got a whole bunch of rice milk that's about to go off and a papaya. So I'm going to make a papaya smoothie. Subscribe if you're new here guys for more adventures with Riley and Elena where I'm usually stressed out as hell and Riley's making me do all this crazy stuff and our beautiful child Lenny we put out videos every Monday trying to do Friday as well but it's proving quite difficult down for a nap so we have free time. We're heading further down the river, we got the tide behind us so we are going quite quick. It'd be better if we could sail but um, there's no wind today. And we just met a lovely couple from Israel who came over to our boat and they said they just spent two months here. They got stuck here because of the virus so yeah they just gave us a whole heap of tips and some of their favourite places and they said it's really lovely, the water's super clean up here. The village is really cute and the people are super nice, so that's pretty good. Looking forward to this. Elena and I have been listening to Laurie Santos's happiness podcast the happy factory or I'm not I'm not sure what it is but we'll link it below very very interesting scientific based analysis on ways that you can change your life and your habits and your the things that you do the things that you think that are important which probably aren't there's a few life hacks but it's all very empirical which I thoroughly enjoy she's very very good over the years, Riley and I have just realized how important it is and how much work it is to stay happy, especially when you're in our situation. I mean, from the outside, I know it looks amazing and it is, but we're in an enclosed space. We're in new places all the time. We don't have a sense of community. Being away from family and friends, there's a lot of downsides to what we're doing as well as so many good things. But um, yeah, it's become really important for us to try and do all that we can to stay happy. Human beings, of course, no matter what your situation, are going to be happy and sad at various times, often based just on your genetics, so there's like a baseline, and then you can make a lot of changes in order to maximise the hand that you dealt, I think is the best way of describing it. If we do get a little bit grumpy or sad or whatever, as everyone on planet Earth does, we're like, oh, you know, sailing around on a boat and you sort of feel a bit guilty. Probably the best thing I learned from that so far was I used to think that you always had to be happy and I felt like really terrible about myself for the times I wasn't happy and what they taught me was just like, it's okay. She'd get grumpy at me because like, she wasn't happy. It's impossible to be happy all the time. So if you're feeling sad, don't worry. We dip down, we come back up and it's, it's fine. I'm happy now. Woo! I that. <laughs> Let's maximize this. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny boys awake, say hello! <laughs> Do you want to go outside? No. No? Do you want bottle? No. No. He's learnt the word no. Well, he learnt it a while ago, but now it's his favourite word. Do you want chocolate? No. Oh, no chocolate then, okay. Come on then. As we've gone further and deeper into the river, it's gotten a lot narrower, a lot greener. 
and there's a heap of boats here which I was not expecting. Some really old beautiful boats too. Good, Good kiwi. And I'm just making some veggie burgers and mushrooms. Might be a spot, or you go further down. Yeah, maybe the hind. Go in front of you. Maybe the hind. In front of me might be good. Yeah. 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 All right, this is attempt number one at anchoring. It's probably going to drag because it's very muddy, but we found a spot in between a few boats. All right, drop it down. Took him. Yeah, but he stopped for a swim. No, no, no. Like I, I overtook him in a reasonably skinny channel. But that was fine. He was going too slow, mate. You I like him. Up. He built his boat. Yeah. I know that. So I'm and he's like, German. He um, probably likes things in order. <laughs> we were second. There'll be so. I bet I've done something wrong. <laughs> no overtaking. Sorry, <laughs> you nailed that, didn't you? Hungry man. I don't know what this is called. Is it men menschweg or dop? It's good cheese. <laughs> so what's the plan now? I'm gonna go and have a coffee with Jan. Jan makes good coffee. He's got a coffee like proper Grinder. old school machine. <laughs> Pretty hard driving and holding this camera. Um, Lenny, you didn't job. help at all. <laughs> hey Lenny, high five. <laughs> So I started moving on my boat in Hamburg a year ago and I sailed down from there through the Netherlands, Belgium, France, Spain and now Portugal. It took me about a year to get here but also mostly because I like to travel slow and I like to meet people on the way and spend more time at different places. I uh, work as a digital nomad, so I basically have uh, my office here, this is my business. What I do is I run an online magazine in Germany where I explain people how to fix things on their boat and together with this goes some online store where people can buy all kinds of uh, electrical supplies for their boat and the nice thing about it is that I can really manage it from anywhere so I have a lot of flexibility which allows me to work and travel at the same time. Jan's one of the good guys, so if you <laughs> want to buy anything online go to his store, what's the store? Uh, Klabautashop.de yeah. Wow. Of course, we also ship all over Europe and if you have a special request we can actually ship worldwide. We basically sell everything from like a little cable lock to a, like a full-blown radar system with chart plot and everything. Um, check it out. <laughs> 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 and if you guys want to follow my trip, check out my blog, sign up for the newsletter and uh, I'll keep you posted. So the links to all of Yarn's stuff we'll put in the description below. Thanks guys, check it out. So I bought the boat uh, three years ago in the north of Germany. I paid less for it than most people spend on a car and I of course took some time to fix it up. My motto is to keep it as simple as possible so I don't have any shower, I don't have running water. As simple as possible, as safe as necessary. That's uh, the idea. The boat is 55 years old, it's 32 feet long and going strong and beautiful. Yeah, I would trust this boat. It's sturdy, isn't it? Yeah, because back when it was built, it was one of the first boats made out of fiberglass. So people didn't know how strong that material was. So they built it basically as thick as they would have built a wooden boat, which makes it quite heavy, but also really, really strong and seaworthy. It can take me anywhere I want. Mm. Amazing. I'm to Elena that I need to stay here for two or three more days because when I first arrive at a place I'm like, this is the best place I've ever been. So I need to reserve judgement, but this is stunningly beautiful. 
There's a reason why people come here and they stay and then they stay a bit more and then all of a sudden 20 years have gone past and I think there's quite a few English tourists that have been trapped here because it's so damn nice. There's a boat over here that's been abandoned for, someone said, at least a couple of years and we've been swinging a little bit closer to it. We're in a river, so there's a pretty strong current and we move differently to the mono holes that are around us. So what I've done is when the current is coming this way, I just turn the steering wheel a little bit to port, which means that our rudder sits like that which means that our boat is sort of kicking off to the left because we were very, very close to that boat before. So I don't know what's gonna happen in the middle of the night when the current swings around. I'll probably hit him. I hope not. I don't think that I will, but for now we're sitting beautifully. So I'm putting a shirt on for you guys, <laughs> trying to keep it, you know, semi-respectable. We're actually going to have a You're chat. You're welcome. We're going to have a chat about my swimwear line. It's going to mostly be me talking, but thanks for sitting next to me. Very <laughs> supportive. I feel better, like, not just talking to you guys, but having you to talk with. Steer the conversation. Yeah, to bounce off. So, yeah, Vagabella Swim, a lot of you will already know that that's in progress. It's my swimwear line. It's made from 100% recycled fibres. And what a journey. <laughs> So what are the major hurdles for you so far? I did not realise swimwear was this expensive to make. Like, looking at all the brands out there, I'm like, how do you make a single cent? But I know how they're making money, it's by buying fabric from China, that's really crap. And not paying fair wages to the employees, or just like... Is there a... Did you hit your head? <laughs> <laughs> come here, come sit with us. So yeah, it turns out trying to do everything the right way is freaking expensive and I don't blame a lot of companies for taking shortcuts. But um, anyway, that's but not what we're not. trying to do. That's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to do everything right and it's a little bit stressful, the financial side. Which brings me to the next thing I should have done is set up a pre-order system. So by asking girls what size they want, what style they want, they could have put a bunch of orders in and then I could have asked the factory to make that but instead I'm creating a certain amount of numbers per size and style and just hoping they'll sell and there's not too many left over because we could lose some money. So I'm just hoping that you guys love them and buy all of them. <laughs> So yeah, we didn't set up a not-for-profit because that would have been more money going not to charity, but 100% of funds will go to Absolutely. various charities, in particular effective altruism. Yeah. And then as we go on, we'll get ideas from you guys as to places that we should do that. 100% yeah. of profits. I'm sure yeah. that that's the only bikini line in the world doing that. And it's all been put on hold because of the virus. So the fabric was made in Italy and because of the virus, they shut the factory before they could send it to where it's getting made in Indonesia. So I'm really sad they couldn't put it on the ship beforehand. Yeah, so I'm not going to give any release dates just yet. They would have yeah, been out by now for sure, but 2020 is just a really strange year. So I'm just trying to get them out there as soon as I can, but not rushing it because I want them to be perfect. In fact, I've kind of liked this time that everything's been put on hold because Ava, my partner, she's a girl from California. She has a child now. Thank you, Ava. She's amazing. And congratulations on your, on your child. Yeah, she has a, she has a skill set that I just don't have. She's been helping me with everything, so we're just perfecting everything before we launch. Ava, you're the best. Sign up to the mailing list and you'll be notified if there's any updates. Follow us on Instagram. That's the face of Agabella Swim right now. Okay. And on the Instagram is the website. So I'll put the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I'm really excited. It's gonna be like boutique-y, not making many pieces so you won't look like any other girl on the beach. Boutique, Lenny, can you say that? That's close enough. Well done. Next week, join us for River Life. This water is indeed so clean here that Riley has been using it to brush his teeth. Still don't know how I feel about that. See you guys soon.